What's up, Noita community? How's it going, guys? Today's video is specifically aimed at the new guys because if you guys don't know, Noita is 50% off on Steam right now for the winter sale. So I know there's a lot of people out there that are wanting to buy like their friend or family member a great gift. And what greater gift could you get than the best single player game of all time, Noita? And whenever you give them that gift, to give them a little bit of something extra, you'll link them this video to say, hey, here you go. Here's this really difficult game that's amazing. And here's a video that hopefully is very short and sweet and helps them, uh, you know, get off to a good start in their Noita journey. So I'll try to keep today's rant as quick as possible for all those new guys in the Noita community. Welcome, you guys. Welcome. So today's video uh, is basically just going to be the Noita wand guide for beginners, for new players. And uh, I have it set up in such a way that like my health is low and if you ever find yourself in low health in Noita, head down because there are these portals all throughout the levels. You jump into the portal and well currently right now you cannot do any editing with your wands that you found in the level. But as soon as you jump into the portal, it takes you to a holy mountain and you can begin to modify your wands. So I'm going to cover what all the stats mean so that you can know how you would like to edit your wands to make them do uh, as much damage as possible. Possible and be as deadly as possible. So whenever you first start off, you're going to have two wands and the stats of them don't really matter so much. It's more about the spells that they spawned with. There's a very limited amount of spells that can spawn on the uh, either wand. So the starter wand is like this wand here is usually your damage wand. Second wand is like your bomb wand is what people refer to it. Uh, second wand pretty much helps you get through the terrain however you can. Uh, to get to like spells or hearts or wands or whatever and the first one is just kill enemies usually obviously you can use it however you would like but that tends to be how players look at it now whenever you're traveling along you'll find some want some wands and what i did is i generated in a couple wands here kind of cheated in a couple wands to help out uh with my explanation here in this guide so i have two different wands one of these is a non-shuffle you'll see it says shuffle no and the other wand is shuffle yes they're pretty pretty much the same wand pretty comparable in stats but just one is a shuffle the other one is not so the difference between these two wands is that the non-shuffle is predictable this is a good thing you want it to fire in from left to right so if you put a green bouncing burst shot that shoots like this and then after it you put a a red spitter bolt that sh that will shoot off to the side like you can you know how it's going to fire it's going to shoot green then red green then red but if you put them on a shuffle wand, it's unpredictable. Sometimes it may shoot the spitter bolt first. Sometimes it shoots the green bolt uh, sh shot first. The order that you put them on the wand, it doesn't even matter. This is irrelevant. It just shoots how it shoots the, the order however it likes to. It just randomizes it. Sometimes it looks like it's shooting predictably. Other times it becomes unpredictable. It's just... You don't like that in Noita. I'm not saying that you can't use a shuffle wand. In the early game, sometimes you don't get a choice. It's the only thing you have to work with. The RNG pretty much just gave you some shuffle wands. But later on in the late game, you prefer to have non-shuffle wands. So you use shuffle wands to just kill enough enemies so that you can get to the better wands. But at the, at the end of the day, what decides if you get a non-shuffle wand or a shuffle wand just comes down to a bit of RNG. Now the first level, the wands are a little bit, uh, they're pre-decided, pre-defined, pre-made wands, meaning like there isn't a huge amount of variance. You'll see that you find a lot of very similar looking wands in the first zones. So don't go thinking that the game is all about randomness. Yes, it is. You don't know if you're going to get a, a like shuffle wand or a non shuffle. Things like that aren't exactly predictable, but every run is winnable and every run starts you off decently. You get you get something to get going. It's up to you to realize what what's available to you and to go crazy with it. Now, so the wand moves in an order from left to right on a non-shuffle wand. That means we don't really we don't want to make use of this shuffle wand. Even even for very experienced players, at the end of the day, we don't use these very often. We just use them for backpack backpack space or maybe an extra like for example, if I had extra bombs or or I just needed something to dig, I could just throw that on this wand here because I, it only has one spell on it anyway. So who cares if it's shuffle or not? But my predictable wand usually is my main damage wand, my best wand. So what I'm going to do here. I'm going to show you ways that you can build this to get a little bit of extra damage and I'll try to make it short and sweet for you brand new guys so you can get to play in Noita yourself. So if you put on something like a triplicate bolt 
and a spark bolt and a bouncing burst. What's gonna happen here, and it doesn't matter which which slots. Like if you if you put them like this, it doesn't matter. This doesn't affect anything. The extra spots that you don't use, uh, there is they don't they don't factor in. Now what it does is it moves from left to right because it is a non shuffle, and when it moves from one square to the next square, it goes by cast delay. So meaning when it moves from triplicate bolt to spark bolt, this time in between each shot will be 0.17 seconds. And then the timing from this spark bolt to this bouncing burst will be another 0.17 seconds. And then once it reaches the end, I mean, you can add on other spells if you like, but once it reaches the very end, that's when it goes by the recharge time, which then goes all the way back to the beginning. So it'll reach the very end and it'll, it'll, it'll take 0.67 seconds to reload all the way back to the start. So think of it like a gun with six shots. I'm from Texas, so maybe that's why I think of a gun. <laughs> but it's your, the cast delay would be the time between each shot and the recharge is the time needed to reload the gun back to a full loaded uh, weapon, basically. So uh, again, 0.17 from here to here, 0.17 here to here, 0.17, and then 0.67 all the way back to the beginning. Now there are some things that can factor in to affect these timers. Every spell has stats on it. Sometimes they add cast delay, sometimes they remove cast delay. For example, this one adds cast delay, 0.13. So actually, to get the real true time, you would have to go uh, 0.13 seconds from this cast delay, plus the 0.17 seconds of the wand is how long it takes to go from here to here. So that would be 0.3, uh, 0.3 seconds to get from here to here. So that's why there's some variance when you fire this. You'll know that it's not necessarily very smooth very predictable if, if it was all 0.17 seconds the pattern would look a little smoother right now let's say you use a multicast right you put down like a double and then you put down another spell well now this double spell is going to cast these these two spells together so this right here is actually one spell group so this one spell group will take 0.17 seconds to move from this spell group to the next one, which the next one is just a single spell by itself. So Triplicate and Spark Bolt will shoot together, Bouncing Burst will shoot by itself. And you can actually see this taking place. And if you go over here, there's even a board to look at to show you the spells that are being cast with each individual click that you make. This can help you with your wand building and also help you understand what exactly is going on when you're firing your wand. So one last thing I want to leave you with, and then you can go play Noita, is that there are triggers and timers, and a lot of people are confused on what they are and their differences. A spark trigger, for example, any trigger, it looks like this, it has like a little star kind of above it. You'll see other spells that have this star, that just means trigger, and it usually says it in the name. In this case, it says spark bolt with trigger. A trigger means when it, when it impacts something, when it hits an enemy, when it hits a wall, when it hits something, deliver whatever's after it. So if you put a bouncing burst, and you shoot it, it means that when it hits this wall, a bouncing burst is going to come out of it. When it hits an enemy, a bouncing burst is gonna fire off into the enemy's stomach. So if you put something like a triple here, you can put actually like three spells, shove all the spells that you have, you know, inside of it. And then whenever this hits the wall, all three of these spells will come flying out. As you can see, this is very good and can do lots of damage. In fact, I have another video that talks about why are trigger spells so great. So once you've played, played a little bit, you may want to check that video out to really teach you how to add even more damage. Uh, the spark timer, on the other hand, it works similar to a trigger. If you shoot and hit a wall, it'll deliver off the, the payload, like all, all, the, all the spells that you have casting in it. But also, whenever you shoot it to the side, you'll notice even without hitting anything, it will deliver it will deliver the spells. So the difference is a trigger and a timer for the first like, you know, second or, or like, you know, half a second. Yes, they are almost identical. But after a certain amount of time, the timer delivers the, the payload no matter what, while the trigger will continue to fly. And if it doesn't hit anything, after a little bit, the spark trigger just, just has a, a lifespan of its own and it just dies out. So there are many times that if you hit nothing, the payload never fires off and never gets delivered. This is the difference between a timer and a trigger. And each timer, this is a spitterbolt timer. There's another one called 
Uh, I mean, no, this one, this one is a spark bolt. Sorry, I keep calling it a spitter bolt. Spark bolt timer. This one here is a spitter bolt timer. This one actually fires off differently. If you look, it actually fires off the timer at the end of its lifespan because a, a spitter bolt kind of flies in an unusual way. But at the very end of its life, it delivers the payload and that's very different from the spark timer because as you can see with the with the spark timer it delivers the payload much earlier the spark the spark bolt's still alive whenever it delivers it but there you go that should be some helpful stuff to help out you new guys if you really want to go wild with stuff like modifiers usually what i recommend doing you put down like a triple you add a modifier put down lots of spells uh try to keep them in one group if you can so three spells grouped together with this triple spell and this is a damage plus so it'll add damage to all three spells in this group you fire it off boom you got some big damage here i like i said do not recommend doing this in something like like a shuffle wand down here because the same exact build we move it down here and we really don't know how it's going to fire sometimes we're going to get a, a nice good big damage shot other times we get single individual shots but if you have to and you're desperate you don't have any other good wands this is still something Something that can get you by especially in the early levels shuffle wands will do just fine but once you get to the late game you do need to transition in non, into non-shuffle wands and you do need to read some of these tool tips to help you get an idea of like what exactly each modifier is doing and how it's going to help the other spells that it's being grouped with because remember spells that are grouped together like this they can share these modifiers with each other this damage plus doesn't apply to just one thing and that's why when I, whenever I fired it there, I was trying to show you that all of them are clearly getting this gold trail. Because see, they don't have the gold trail. And then now when you do fire them with this, they do get the gold trail. That lets you know that they all share in that damage. Oh my gosh, this video ended up being so long. I ranted for too long. New guys, welcome to Noita. By the way, you'll get used to my rants if you stop by many of my videos over on YouTube. I talk too much. But uh, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoy Noita Deuces.